Welcome to an EMUML tutorial on creating an information exchange. You should have a little background in information sharing. An understanding of NEEM, XML, and UML would be helpful, but it's not really required. If you'd like more background, you may want to see the NEEM UML high-level introduction. In this tutorial, we'll cover the essential elements of a NEEM UML model, the steps for creating an IEPD or information exchange package from that model, and what the NEEM UML tools produce. If you need more background, please see the NEEM UML webinars on the NEEM.gov website. The business case for this example will be healthcare. It's based on a design done by Tony Malia using the RIM healthcare model as presented to the OMG's Healthcare Interoperability Workshop in June of 2012. The subject is the exchange of healthcare medical conditions involving a client, which is a patient, and a healthcare service provider. The basic information to be shared is information about the client, which is the healthcare consumer, the service provider, the person actually providing the healthcare, the service provided to the client by the provider, and the healthcare organization. Of course, we also need to understand the names and identifiers for the people involved, the medical condition, and code lists for medical problems. For code lists, we're going to use a problem code that includes finding, symptom, problem, complaint, and condition. All of the above is then packaged for a healthcare information exchange. We'll now build a model in our UML tool. First, we're going to create a new project from scratch. We'll call it Medical Exchange. Note there are also some NEEM-specific templates available. We're going to load a template that provides us with NEEM core as well as the NEEM profiles. Let's review the contents of the template. Notice that we have my NEEM model. This is the template for us to fill in to create our IEPD. Note that inside of it we have packages for exchanges, extensions, and subsets. Packages are a way to organize UML elements in your model. Each of these packages has a corresponding diagram that we see over here on the right. So the NEEM core subset has the NEEM core subset diagram. Note that at this point it's empty, as is our extension model and our exchange model. These are places to put our purpose specific content. Notice also that the NEEM UML profile is loaded, as is the NEEM core data model. For those of you who are familiar with NEEM, you may recognize the rather extensive set of properties and classes associated with NEEM core. There are also diagrams for NEEM core. These allow us to explore the NEEM core model graphically. Now let's create our specific IEPD. What we're going to do first is create an extension model to represent the high-level domain concepts for a healthcare exchange. We're going to create a class for client and one for a service provider. Note the yellow halos around the classes. These are warnings. If we click on a little warning sign, we see that a name, naming and design rule has not been satisfied by this class. It says that our types must be documented. One thing the tool can't do for you is create your documentation, unfortunately. So what we're going to do is go over here and type in some initial documentation. As we do so, note that the warnings go away, meaning that the naming and design rules have been satisfied and a conformant IEPD can be produced. We also want an association between client and service provider. 
This is the service provided. By using an association class like this, we're able to assign properties and associations to the association itself. It's managed as a first class element in our model. Note also that the ends have been named for us in accordance with typical name naming conventions. Now what we'd like to do is connect these high level concepts with Neem Core, in particular concepts of person and organization. We're going to go into the Neem Core subset and ask the tool to show us the classifiers that are available. Now we know we want something about person because clients and service providers are people. We see there's quite a bit for person. We're going to just start with person type. Then we can do the same thing for organization. And again, we see organization type. Note that these are brought in without properties or associations. We're going to subset Neem Core to bring in just those properties that we like. We'll start with organization. It lists properties that are available. We see there's quite a few for organization. At this point, we're going to just bring in organization name. This is sufficient for our example. Of course, you may want more for your particular application. You see that it brought in organization name and that that has a text type as a type. If we look down in our subset model, we see organization and person, which we selected, and also that text type has been brought in because it's required to support organization name. As we bring in properties, it brings in anything required to support those properties. Now let's do the same thing for person. We see a rather extensive list of properties for person. We'll just pick a few. Let's say birth date. We see that there's already some medical condition information available. We're going to bring in medical condition to see if that fits our requirements. And of course we'd want the person's name. As with organization, the properties were included as were any of the types required. In this case, person name and their medical condition type. What we need to do is see if there's any properties of these that we have to include as well. So we're going to look at person name first. We see that there's quite a few options for representing a name. We're just going to use their full name for now. We'd also like to check out their medical condition. So we're just going to bring in the condition description text. As you can see, we're starting to build up a model that represents the parts and pieces of Neem Core that we want for medical condition exchange. But now we have to connect what we brought in from Neem Core with our extension model. Both clients and service providers are people. We want to be able to reuse all of the person type information for both clients and service providers. A good way to do that in Neem is to use the role of association. Here we see that a client is a role of a person. We want to say that a client must be the role of exactly one person, but a person can be a client multiple times. Likewise, a service provider is a role of a person. And again, a person may be a service provider 
in multiple circumstances. That's represented by the cardinality from the person type to the service provider. Our requirements also provided for a problem code. We're going to add a problem code enumeration and put in values for finding symptom complaint and condition. We're going to then add a property to our client for this problem code. In this way we can see how we can add additional type store model, in this case problem code, in our extension model and use them in classes that are building on Neme Core. Because this is just an example, I'm going to turn off our active validation and accept that we don't have documentation for each of these elements. I just don't type that fast. One other thing that we need is our actual exchange document. A condition exchange and populate it with properties for each of the classes that we've created. And there's one more thing we need to do. We need to create our exchange model to specify which of these classes can actually be a document transferred between stakeholders. For this, I'm going to create what's called a property holder. Because all we want in this case are properties representing the documents to be exchanged. And the only document we're exchanging at this point is our condition exchange. Between the exchange model, our extension model, and our subset model, we've defined the information that we part of our exchange. One other aspect is the metadata corresponding with the actual IEPD. In this case, we're going to create an IEPD for the condition exchange. And now that there's already values set, these are defaults that came from our template. Our condition IAPD imports our exchange model, which is simply this one, which in turn uses our extension model, which is our logical model, which in turn uses our Neem Core subset. With this information defined between what we've entered and what was provided by the template, we have everything we need for a complete IEPD. We're going to ask the tool to export this to a Neem model package description, which in this case will be an IEPD based on the metadata provided. Let's look at what it's created. We see that the created MPD has a set of schemas. It has templates for our samples. It has the Neem libraries. It has document that's created, the change log, and catalog. All the elements required for a Neem IEPD. First, let's look at the documentation produced. Based completely on what's in the model, the purpose, scope, artifacts, and detailed documentation of the IEPD is generated. Of course, you will want to add additional text, but this provides a good start on the documentation of an IEPD. What includes all the required elements, the diagrams that we created in UML, and the documentation of each element, whether it's in our extension model or it's part of Neem Core. We're then going to look at the specific schemas produced. Non-technical users may want to skip this part. We see this created a subset model, the name base models, our extension, 
and our exchanges. Let's look at our extension model. Here we see a complete XML schema with all the elements required by the XML schema specifications as well as the name, naming, and design rules. For example, here we can see our problem code with its specific values. We can see our condition exchange with properties for person, organization, client, and service provider. We see that the global elements as required by the name naming design rules have been correctly created. We see our client type. and service provider type. We also see that the association between them, the service provided, has been mapped to a name association type with properties for the service provider and the client, implementing the reference scheme as required by the name naming design rules. So as you can see, with a relatively simple model, we've created a conformant name schema and IEPD. An important part of any life cycle is evolution. Let's evolve our IPD by connecting service provider with organization. We'll start by creating a healthcare organization class We now want to connect healthcare organization with organization type from Neem Core. We'll say that healthcare organization is a role played by an organization. We can now create an association from our service provider to healthcare organization, set the properties of the ends, and name them appropriately. One more thing we should do is add healthcare organization to our condition exchange. This completes the update of the IPD at the UML level. We can now export this to a Neem MPD. This will create an updated set of schemas, documentation, and other Neem artifacts. As the generation is complete, we can now inspect the XML. As before, we see that the XML schema has been generated. We have our new healthcare organization type with the elements for service provider, the role, and the other details required by the name NDR. We also see that service provider type has a required property referencing the providing organization. This completes the update of the IEPD and the NEEM artifacts, as well as a tutorial on creating an IEPD with NEEM UML. This concludes the NEEM UML webinar on creating an IEPD. For more information, please see the neem.gov website. Thank you for your interest in neem UML.